again for the month of September 2022 is I am in God's pre-existing plan for greatness. Can somebody say that? And say it convincingly. I am in God's pre-existing plan for greatness. Let's flip our Bible quickly to the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. 5 verse 5. He said, are we there? One, two, go. Are we there? If you are there, say yeah. If you are yet to get there, say hold on, pastor. Are you there? All right, praise God. Jeremiah 1, 5, 1, 2, go. Be before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before you came as forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet unto nations. Hallelujah. I ordained you a leader unto a nation. Praise the Lord. He said before, before. He formed you in the belly of the one that carried you to this place. He knew you already. Praise the Lord. And he said he ordained you to be a prophet unto nations. He ordained you to be a leader. Prophets are leaders. Praise the Lord. He ordained you to be a leader to your world, to your world, to your nation. Praise the Lord. We have uh, our teaching series for this month is caption understanding the mind of god for me understanding the mind of god for me we are taking part one today understanding the mind of god for me he has created you to be a leader what is in his mind jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 as our anchor text for that teaching series Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know, God speaking, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, say the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. You will agree with me that every natural parent want their children to be great. True or false? Every natural. Every natural parent want their children to be great. In fact, some will even pray, you'll be greater than me. True or false? That's a good one. I'm talking about good parents now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good parents will want their children to be greater than them. They pray to them. They decree over them. Where I'm not privileged to get to in life, you will surpass it in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Good parents. Not many parents will pray that prayer. Some parents don't want their children to be greater than them. Praise the Lord. But good parents, naturally, we want their children to be greater than them. Now, let's flip the coin. If you and I, being natural, we want our children to be great, then how much more our Father in heaven? God wants you and I to be great. He wants you and me to be great. God is the almighty God. Great God. All great God. Yet the Bible said he created you and me in his image after his likeness. So if the characteristics of God, one of the characteristics of God is greatness, then I should be great. I must be great. I will be great. Say that to yourself if you believe. Prophesy that to yourself if you believe. I should be great. I must be great. And I will be great. Irrespective of the plan of the enemy concerning my life. I will be great. The devil cannot cut short my greatness. So God has planned for you. According to that book of Jeremiah 29, 11. My thought for you. Is there peace? There is no single evil in my plan for you. My plan is to give you the expected end before I formed you in your mother's belly. I know you, I ordained you to be a leader to your nation. Praise the Lord. So, 
the plan of God, how do we assess the plan of God for our life? The plan of God is not far-fetched. The plan of God is in the book that is packaged for us called the Bible. The plan of God is inside the word of God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Flip your Bible there if you like. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do. Hmm. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate therein day and night. What the Bible is saying there is that it should guide your thoughts. The word is meant to guide your thought and my thought pattern. That is what he's saying. You meditate therein day and night so that you can observe to do according to everything that is inside of it. And when you have done that, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. You can underline that. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thy greatness shall be established. And then you will have a good success. Thy greatness shall be established. It's not in the Bible. I'm the one interpreting that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. He said, for then you will make your way prosperous. In other words, you'll be successful all around. You will be successful in every area. When you do according to that what is inside of it. The Bible is not just a book. The Bible is not just a book. It's not a book. The Bible is not a book. The Bible is a spiritual mirror. Where you can see yourself in it. It's a spiritual mirror. You remember the Bible said we are created in the book of Genesis in the image of God after the likeness of the Most High God. So he has created a mirror for you and me that we can behold our personality inside of it. The Bible speaking in the book of James chapter 1 verse 22 to 25. James 1, 22 to 25. He said, but be ye doers of the word. Please follow me. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Praise God. I want us to pick some things from that verse. I said it is a spiritual mirror, it is not a book. Now, hear what the word is saying there. James 1, 22. He said, but be ye doers of the word, not just hearing the word only, deceiving your own self. So if you hear the word, you don't do the word. That is self-deceit. That's what the Bible is saying. Now, hear, hear what it says for that. To tell us that the Bible is a spiritual mirror. He said, For if any be the hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. God comparing the word of God with a mirror. Okay, beholding his natural face in the glass, for he beholdeth himself, he goeth his way, and straight away he forgeteth what manner of man he is. Suppose when you stand in the mirror, you have seen yourself. In no time, it's likely for you to forget how you have seen. That's why some of us will look at the mirror <laughs> many times in the day. You know some people, they, they can stand before the mirror. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They can stand and stand before the mirror, maybe ten times in a day, and look at, well, you know, left, <laughs> something, maybe something has... As losing shape. <laughs> Praise God. Oh my goodness. We should be, that is, we need to go into the word of God on a daily basis, constantly, so that we don't forget the kind of person we are. So that we don't forget the kind of person we are. For that individual beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight away forget the manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. What happened to the man? Eh? Are we there together? This man shall be blessed indeed. This man shall be blessed indeed. The Bible is not a religious book. 
is a book for everyone that God has brought to this earth to guide us. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. But we all with open face beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the Lord. This Bible, the Word of God, simply reveals to us the provisions of redemption. What redemption has to offer for me, has to offer for you, is what we get from the Word of God. The Word of God reveals to us the provision of redemption. The provision of redemption. Redemption, remember last week, you know, in our teaching last week, we talk about the wells of salvation that you draw joy out of it. And we said the wells of salvation is loaded with so many things. So many things. So redemption has offered us so many things. But we unpack this thing from inside the word of God. From inside the word of God. From inside the word of God. Jesus Christ says something. He said John the Baptist is the greatest of all man ever lived. But the least inside the kingdom of God is greater than John. So every child of God has the potential to be greater than John the Baptist, spiritually speaking. Now, if we now come to now convert that to reality, now depends on how we handle it. How we handle the word of God depends on how we how we reflect that statement from the word of God. Matthew chapter eleven verse eleven. Matthew chapter eleven verse eleven. And Jesus Christ said, as God has sent him to this world, so he has also sent us into this world. So we are meant by God to manifest the glory of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, your greatness on this face of the earth shall be established in the name of Jesus Christ. I said your greatness shall be established in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your greatness shall be established in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of God simply reveals our identity in Christ to us. That's what it does. The word of God, the Bible, it reveals our identity in God. Our true identity. It reveals it to us. It reveals it to us. It reveals our identity to us. Now, we're going to look at what the redemption has provided for us in this service. What has redemption provided for us? Remember where we are coming from. We he said, according to our theme of the, of the month, he said that we are in God's pre-existing plan to be great, to be great, to be great, to be great. You and I are meant by God, designed by God to be great on this earth, to be great on this earth. Nothing shall cut short your greatness in the name of Jesus. What has redemption, what redemption has provided for us? Number one, what redemption has provided for us is we are redeemed to walk in dominion. We are redeemed to walk in dominion. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, 26 to 27. Genesis 1, 26 to 27. And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. So God, redemption, the plan of God. The original plan, original intention of God for man is to dominate the earth, to represent his interests, to look after the affairs of this faith, of this fear for God, the original plan of God. And if that is the original plan of God, the original plan of God has not changed. He has not changed. That's why he sent his son here. To come and redeem us so that we can tap into the mind of Christ. Dominion. To dominate in all sphere of our lives. We have that spiritual capacity 
to dominate in all areas of our life, in all areas of our endeavor, if we follow after God's heart. If we follow after God's heart, we are meant, ordained, designed by God to dominate over circumstances, to dominate over issues, to dominate over challenges. That's the plan of the Most High God. That's the plan of God. That's the plan of God for you. That is the plan of God for me. The plan of God for you and me is that I can reign on the earth. According to the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah I mean, Revelation, rather, Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 to 10. I am meant to reign on the earth. You are meant to reign on the earth. The Bible speaking, it said, And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. We are created by God, we are designed by God to reign. To reign over life, situation, and circumstances. No matter what may be facing you, it's not meant to consume you. No matter, there is always a way out as a child, as a redeemed child of God. No matter what you may be going through. You are meant to subdue that situation. You have that inside of you and me. God has designed you. He has designed me by redemption. Originally, he has designed us. Our parents failed us. Redemption redesigned us to dominate over issues and circumstances. If we follow after God's heart. If we follow after God's heart. If we follow after God's heart. We are, we are to reign as kings. We are to reign as kings. We are to reign as kings. We are to reign as kings and priests on the earth. You are to reign in the name of Jesus Christ. Your throne will be established in the name of Jesus Christ. Your throne shall not be taken by any man in the name of Jesus Christ. I said your throne shall be established. Your throne will never be taken by any man in the name of Jesus Christ. God has created you and me to reign. Let us, you see, that needs to settle inside of us. You need to hear that word and let it say, enter inside of you. Enter into your spirit that I am meant to reign. I am meant to reign. I am meant to dominate. I am meant to dominate over all affairs of life. Praise the Lord. When you let that enter inside of you, then that will form how you respond to certain things. Praise the Lord. I am meant to dominate. I am meant to reign as king on the earth. I am meant to reign as king on the earth. Also, you are meant to be a bright spot in the body of Christ. Ah, this is very important. We are meant to be a bright spot in the body of Christ. We are meant to be a shining light, a shining star in the body of Christ. We are meant to be a shining light, a shining star in the body of Christ. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 to 15 he said you are the light of the world a city that is set on an hill that cannot be hid. men don't light a candle and put it under a bushel but they put it on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven if you must manifest your greatness on the earth you are meant to represent god and represent god well that's what i mean you are meant to represent god very well on this earth you you are meant to become an exemplary for the world to see you are meant to be a model you are meant to be 
an ad, somebody that they admire, somebody that people admire, not envy you, but they admire you. They admire you. What you do is what they like to do. They want to follow after your God. When we get to that realm, you see things just you think, things just working. They're working on their own. They're working on their own. They're working on their own. Now let's look at how to reign as a king. How do we reign as a king? We are created by God to be great in life. Praise the Lord. It is in the pre-existing plan of the Most High God to be great in life. Now we said by redemption, we are meant to have to 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 dominate the earth, to reign as a king on the earth. Now, how do you reign as a king? How to reign as a king? Number one, if you must reign as a king on the earth, number one is you must not be slothful. You must not be slothful. You must not be slothful. Proverbs chapter 2, 12, verse 24. It said, the hand of the diligent shall be a rule. It's only that are diligent that have access to the throne. The act the hand of the diligent shall be a rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Diligence is what creates your throne. Diligence. Diligence in everything that you do. In, in anything, anything that we can think of. Either spiritually or physically in anything that we do. Diligence is what gives us our place. Diligence. Diligence in everything that we do. To reign as a king on the earth, you must not be slothful. You must be diligent in everything that you do. I must be diligent in everything that I do. And in the name of Jesus Christ, your kingship, your queenship, in the name of Jesus shall be established in the name of Jesus Christ. I said your kingship and queenship shall be established in the name of Jesus Christ. Proverbs 19.15 also, he said, slothful cast it into a deep sleep. And an idle soul shall suffer hunger in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, when we talk about grace, we are not here to excite ourselves. There is something. For, God's prov for every God's provision, there is always some responsibility that comes with it. For every God's provision, there is a responsibility. So that we don't excite ourselves. We are not here to excite ourselves with words that God's... God said, I'm going to be great. And then you fold your hands. That greatness may, ne it may never come to light. God has said it. It is settled in heaven. But how do we realize it? The reality of it. It calls for certain res responsibility. It calls for certain responsibility. My father said, a faith that will make God 100% responsible is an irresponsible faith. So if you are a child of God and you are that individual that you are relying on God to do everything, God will do it. God will do it. There are some things God may never do because he wants you to do certain things as well before he is committed to it. So being slothful, it should not be mentioned among any child of God because your father in heaven is not slothful. The Bible said he created everything six days. On the eighth day, he rests. I mean, on the seventh day, he rested. He expects us to rest, but he expects us also to walk. The first thing he gave man when he created man was to walk. Praise the Lord. The Bible said he made man. He created a garden. He told him, okay, look after this garden. Begin to walk. Carry on. Praise the Lord. Praise mighty Jesus. Not being slothful. Number two, how to reign as a king or to establish our kingship is we must be spiritual. We must be spiritual. Being spiritual will give you your place on the earth when it's coupled with other things like diligence that we've just mentioned now. Being spiritual. The Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 6, it said, for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and also is peace. So when you, are, when you are moved and ruled by, sense, by, 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 by your sensual pulses, then the Bible is saying that that individual cannot go far. Because the spiritual is what controls the physical. There are certain things that you need to get from the spirit realm. 
there are certain things that is revealed unto you. The Bible said in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2, I think verse 2, if I'm correct, it said uh, the secret things belongs unto God. It is those that it reveals to you that belongs unto you. And the Bible said God is a spirit. Everyone that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if the hidden thing is, belongs to God and is the one that reveals to you that belongs to you, and he says you must worship him in spirit and truth, so before you get anything from him, you must be spiritual. For anything to be released or to be given to you, you must be spiritual to obtain it from God. So we must be spiritual. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. He said, but the natural man received not the things of the spirit of God. Natural man, a carnal-minded man, a sensual driven man. Someone that is guided by all their senses only. There is no tune to a, there is no tune of any form or shape to the things of the spirit. He said, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. A natural man cannot receive from the things of the spirit. He cannot receive from the things of the spirit. Because even when God show it to him, that's what he's saying. Even if God show it to him, they are foolishness to him. He cannot comprehend it. It doesn't have meaning. It doesn't have meaning. Somebody is going to such a challenge now, for example, and God is saying, like he told the man, go to pool of Siloam, go and wash. If you are not a spiritual man to go and wash in the, the what does that what does that solve in my problem? It doesn't solve anything in my problem. I shared my testimony here um, se severally. I was going through a particular audio for 12 years. And on a particular day, the Spirit of God, I was listening to a testimony. The person said he gave testimony 7,000 7, times. I mean, give thanksgiving 7,000 times, brother. And the Spirit of God told me on the spot, do 9,000 thanksgiving. Spiritual. 9,000 thanksgiving. It, should, it, it shouldn't make sense. 9,000 thanksgiving. How do I do it? The Spirit of the Lord, because, you see, God will reveal to you by what you know. I was a Muslim before, so the test view thing, I know how to do it. So I only just bought, you know, um, the computerized one to count, to do the counting. And I was doing the Thanksgiving three days with a fast. Day one fast, 3,000. Day two fast, 3,000. Day three fast, 3,000. One line of prayer a week after. What I've been looking for for 12 years was given to me. Spiritual. Spiritual. A carnal man cannot receive because they are foolishness. It's, if not for the grace of God, I could have trashed that and trashed my destiny. 9,000 times given. What does it matter? Praise the Lord. But that is where the solution lies. That's where the solution lies. Go and wash seven times. If you had washed six times, there would be no solution. To that problem there wouldn't have been solution to that problem so we must be spiritual we must be what spiritual if we must if our kingship our throne must be established we must be spiritual let's not work as a carnal man let's not work as a carnal man it's not about you have heard me say it times and over it's not about religion mm -mm. it is not about religion to be spiritual is not religion god is not religious God is not a God of Muslim. He told me that many years ago. He's not a God of Muslim. He's not a God of Christian. He's not a God of Hindu. He's not a God of any religion. God is no God of any religion. Let nobody fool you. God is God. And he's a God of those that practice his principles and his precepts. We gather here together to hear the word of God. It's a spiritual school. We are in a spiritual school to learn the word of God. Praise the Lord. We must be spiritual. We must be spiritual. He said... They are foolishness unto him, neither can they know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You can simply know them. Oh my goodness, God will help us in the name of Jesus. God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. We said, we must, part of, you know, what the redemption has offered for us, um, you know, to uh, dominate the heart, praise the Lord. And we said that we must, I mean, part of it is that we must reign 
we, as kings on the earth. Also, we say we must be a bright spot in the body of Christ. God has created every one of us to be great. But there are certain things that we do, we must do to release those things to us. To, so how do we, how to be a bright spot in God's body? How do we become a bright spot in God's body? How do we become a shining light in God's body? How, 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 how? How do we? To, that is, we must become a good ambassador. We must become a good what? A good ambassador. Every child of God that believed in the finished work of Christ is an ambassador. You are a representative. What does that mean? You are a representative. It's not about tie to. It's not about tie to. It's not about tie to. One of my mentors said, tie to can tie you down as a goat. It's not about tie to. It is not in tie to. It is not as a tie to. Praise the Lord. It's not as it's not being a reverend, pastor, archbishop, uh, archdeacon, or all those things. They are for administrative convenience. Praise the Lord. They are for administrative convenience. Praise God. It's not in the tie to Sama. Every child of we all have responsibility. Every child of God, we have responsibility. If truly you believe in the finished work of Christ, Jehovah God is your father. You belong to his family. You are a representative of his kingdom and you must represent well. Every ambassador that fails to represent their country very well in any country, they will call them back. True or false? There will be a recall. God will not recall you. I said you will not be recalled. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God. You will not be recalled. You are an ambassador. Ambassador. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. He said, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. For who? As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. What we are bringing out from that verse is that we are ambassadors. We are ambassadors. If you have given your life to Christ, you believe in the finished work of Christ, you claim to be a child of God, that's who you are. You are a representative of God. So you must represent God well, even in the marketplace. You must represent God well, not in church, not on Sunday alone. In fact, that Sunday is for us to come and Take some anointing, take some empowerment, replenish ourselves, and go into the marketplace for the rest of the week, Monday to Friday, and begin to ambassador well. Praise the Lord. <laughs> if, if there is anyone like that. And begin, to, and begin to represent well, ambassador well. Praise the Lord. Because you are an ambassador. So you begin to do your work well. Represent him well that he will look at everything we do. The, the man up there, he looks, he just do like this. He's looking at every one of us. Everyone. And he will give unto us according as our work shall be. He will do unto us according as our word shall be. He will do unto us according as our word shall be. Romans chapter 12 verse 9 to 10. Rounding up. Romans Chapter 12, 9 to 10. Let love be without dissimulation. Abort that which is evil. In other words, hate that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor. Preferring one another. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2. I said to be a bright spot in the body of Christ. How do we? To be a bright spot. How do we become a shining light? We are a city that is set upon the hill that cannot be healed. How do we do this? The Bible is telling us here. Let love we be without. We must love ourselves. Love ourselves. And love those that are without. It takes love, genuine love, to bring those that are without and bring them into the fold. Praise the Lord. 
It is not the will of the Father that any man should perish. Evangelism, I've said, said it times and again, evangelism is not until when we go to the field to evangelize. That is what I call spiritual marketing. It is not until we go how to do the spiritual marketing. We can market in our character and attitude. Praise the Lord. We can market in our character and attitude and draw people in. Everyone has that responsibility. Don't look like me like you are a saint. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Everybody, every, 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 every less nobody, every one of us, we have that responsibility. You are a child of God. You have given your life to Christ. You have that responsibility. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. It's a closing scripture. He said, let all bitterness, all rot, all anger, and clamor of an evil speaking, let it be what? Okay, let's flip our Bible. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. <laughs> Ephesians 4, 31. So, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not me reading. It's the word of God. So let's go to it together. It's just because of our time. Okay, that's why sometimes we just praise the Lord. But sometimes it's good to call ourselves into the word. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Ephesians 4, 31. Let's go. One to go. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind, 32, and be ye kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake had forgiven you. Praise the Lord. This is how to become a bright spot in the body of Christ. Thereby establishing our greatness and our kingship on the earth. Therefore, establishing, you must direct people in the right path through your character and your attitude. Let your light sh so shine to the world that men may come to your light. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Everything that represents the spirit of religion in our life, the Lord God by His Spirit will kill it. He will destroy it. He will destroy and kill it in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have been blessed this morning, rise up with me to your feet. Rise up with me to your feet. Quickly. Before we go into prayer. Before we go into prayer. There are some individual in our midst that I would love to encourage them by yielding themselves unto God. The journey begins from identifying what Jesus Christ has accomplished for you and me by first giving your life to Christ. That which is born of the flesh is flesh that is born of the spirit is spirit don't be surprised that i tell you you must be born again being born again is simply identifying with christ believing in the work that he has done and uh, pledging your life to follow after him it's very simple and that's done in two ways by believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth you are under the sound of my voice this morning you have not given your life to Christ before now, but you want to do so. Permit me to lead you before the Lord in a very simple but very potent prayer. As you apply your faith to that prayer, you are under the sound of my voice. You want to give your life to Christ. Or you want to rededicate your life. Perventure you had given your life before, but some pressure of the world has made you to take few steps backward. But you want to align yourself with the resurrection lord this morning pray this simple prayer with me say with me lord jesus i come to you as i am today i believe that you died for me on the third day you rose again and you have been at the right hand of the father thank you for saving me 
thank you me thank you for forgiving me my sin in the name of Jesus Christ father in the name of Jesus Christ you have prayed that prayer you can place your hand on your chest as you leave it lift it up as I pray with you father in the name of Jesus Christ the King of glory we thank you for this precious individual that you have found by your grace this morning Lord, we ask that the same grace to which you have found them, keep and preserve them in the name of Jesus. Let the devil not be able to seek them from you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Keep them, O oh Lord. Write their name in the book of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen.